right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, as I said, I'm Heather Lamb. I am the Smart Education Consultant out of Texas, and I'm glad that you're joining us today for the May Smart Table Virtual User Group session. I'm pretty excited. I'm going to share hopefully some things that as you're preparing for summer that um, you might want to try out. And um, if um, even if you don't have a table just yet, hopefully you do have a table and you've experienced it. Um, whether it's the, I'm going to it, really what I'm sharing today is pretty generic, so whether you have a brand new table, which is, this is our new table right here, so um, if you have a new table, that's great. If you don't, the, everything that I'm sharing will work um, on a, a table that you might have in your classroom and, and maybe being doing, doing some training this summer, so hopefully um, what I'm going to share today will, will help you with that. So glad that you're here, and if you're joining us maybe virtually um, in the recording, hopefully um, you can send any questions to me if you have them after the fact. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I'm just going to do, because um, sometimes it seems that we're still having um, new people that join, so I always want to just give an overview of who I am and then talk about what we do within this webinar. I do try to make it as conversationally um, possible, and so there's a couple of ways that you can join or can share, so I'll talk about those. Um, we'll talk about that Smart Table 442i, not really in depth, but what we're going to talk about because there's some new updates. Um, there is a table software update and then the toolkit is version 2.5, but I want to share that. And then I've been doing kind of a back to the basics series, so wanting to um, really focus in on some things of, you know, just kind of getting people, maybe you're new to the table, maybe you are new to developing things on your own. So, so just, just revisiting those. So that's why I'm calling it a Back to the Basics series. So who am I? Well, I said I'm Heather Lamb, and I am based out of Texas, so I was talking to somebody in Calgary just a short bit ago, and I said, well, I don't have a table at my house right now because I work remotely, and um, but um, I'm from Texas because he thought maybe, I guess he didn't know where I was from, and he said, oh, he laughed because I guess I have a little bit of a Texas twang. So um, anyway, so I didn't throw any y'alls out there just as I was talking to him, but I probably will for you because it just happened. I want to remind you that if you are on Twitter, I love Twitter for professional development, not just for table things, but just any kinds of professional developments. I mean, right now my most favorite thing to connect with people because the, t the 140 characters, you really have to think about what you're going to say, and you can lurk, and so I'm on Twitter. I'm Heather Lamb 8 If you are on there, I would love for you to follow me, and I can follow you back. I am, I do have a website, and um, under um, Heather Lamb Digital Dashboard, right here. So if you haven't seen my website, check that out because um, I do, I post the sessions. There's a link and there's some resources there. So those are, those are some resources and I'll revisit them a little bit um, in a little bit. All right. So how can you participate? Well, obviously, um, if you haven't figured it out, you, there, is a, there is a question panel that you can type your questions in. So please, if you have any questions, I'm gonna, I try to go as slow as possible to help you. There's a couple of ways that you can participate in this. If, if you um, have your toolkit open, then you can try to do this. This is not, I have done what I call make it and take it. This is not so much a make it and take it, but what I will tell you is that I'll be sharing these resources so you could go back and try them out and re-listen to the recording. So there's a question panel, so please ask me those questions. Um, I make kind of guesses as to what you guys need, so if you have something that's pressing or you're just confused about something, please use that. The other way to do, um, to to participate is the raise your hand feature. So let's try it out. Um, there's a little, you should see in your little question panel um, a raise your hand. There, I see, if you see over here, there is, so can you raise your hand and let me know that you can hear me today? Oh, Julie can hear me. When, and so you can raise your hand and you can click on it. Um, Becky can hear me, Jessica can hear me, great. So it sounds like I'm doing okay. I'm, today I'm actually, um, 
facilitating this by myself, so hopefully we won't have any technical difficulties. Um, we've started, if you haven't, it, um, if you didn't know, we actually, I used to lead, or I did lead for some time, a Texas webinar that was about just notebook and different things in general, and we've had such great success that I joined with um, Tara Mattingly, so on, in July, we're, we've started it um, this week, it's called Teacher to Teacher, and it's a webinar for smart, um, just anything kind of smart. It might have some table things. This is specifically for the table. The next session is going to be July 20, believe 23rd. I'll have to pull my calendar up to, to make sure of, of which it is. Um, and I, I'll post that on the, I'll post that in the file um, from um, the follow-up file. So, um, that's what I want to say about that. Let me go back to full screen. So if you, so Becky, I see your hand is raised. So definitely, if you want to talk, and I will tell you about talking, it works better sometimes if your computer isn't totally set up. Um, there's sometimes some feedback between your microphone and your and your speakers. So I can make it work. But if you want to ask a question, please do. The session is being recorded, so and I'll talk about that in my um, YouTube channel, and you'll get a follow-up email with all my resources in it. So that's kind of the logistics. And why do we do this? Well, I, I getting all these questions, I felt like there was a need to help people um, to connect, but also to learn how to do some the cool, awesome things. So we we I, we collectively create. That's our make it and take it. Um, I'm in probably in the fall. I'm going to start back doing some make it and take it. But if you have any needs, don't hesitate to reach out to me. So um, I put my email up up there. So it's Heather Lamb at smarttech.com. So if you have any needs, um, if you if you're doing some training and you need some resources, don't hesitate to ask me about that um, as well. Um, I've got resources that I'd be glad to share so you don't have to recreate the wheel. I'm not a big fan of recreating the wheel. Um, and then also building skills and techniques, sharing best practices, and then just networking. So if you're looking for someone potentially in your area that might have a table and you want to bounce ideas off, it's a great way to, to facilitate those conversations virtually. And I have my fun little friends here. This is the new table, the 442i. Um, it is about 90% larger, and um, this was actually an activity pack that they're working on that I created that's using the paint program and trying to raise up the, you know, on blooms. I just put some words up on the page and, and that the particular word I think they're doing is um, grumpy. So those kids, they were first in kindergartners and they had to describe or draw what they felt grumpy look like. And then I've, we've got our little, um, the smart document camera plugged into the table and so that works really well. And the, actually, the smart document camera, everything I'm showing you could do with the, the 230i. So it's just this is the new table pictures. All right, so what's new? So it's not so new, but new to some people is there's a, the toolkit. Um, version 2.5 is available. So where do you find that software? So let me go over to my website. So I'm going to go to smarttech.com. And let me make sure that you're, yep, I just want to make sure you guys are up, but my internet's not slowing down. I'm going to go to the Smart Support tab. I'm going to go to Software Downloads. And from here, I'm going to scroll down the page till I found the picture of the Smart Table. So keep going down, and there it is right there. So there's my picture of my Smart Table. So here is the software. So notice, I want to, if you're new to the table, the question that always happens is people just go really fast. And, and I put in my file, but I'll talk about it right here so I don't have to bounce, bounce back and forth. This download table software, this is the software that you'll put on the table, whether you have a 230i or a 442i. It's version 2.6. What's new in version 2.6? Well, there's there's some features that are new, but the best thing, I think, or one of the best things, is that Notebook 11 is fully supported in that. Um, so if you have notebook files, if you're if you are, are downloading things from, things from the Smart Exchange and they're using the Activity Builder that's inside of Notebook, those will actually work on the table. So you'll want to update, and I'll talk more about how to update it, but I want to 
bring your attention here. And then here is, there's only one, one software um, version because the table is running a Windows platform. In the toolkit, the toolkit is actually what goes on the table. I mean on your tool on your computer, sorry. So that the toolkit the table software goes on your table, the toolkit goes on your computer, and there is a Windows and Mac version. So we've got 2.5 for Windows and 2.5 for Mac. So depending on whatever your operating system is. And some people because of previous knowledge about activation codes, things like that, you don't need any kind of codes for this. So you, you don't need a code. You do, however, the smart table support smart sync and um, it does support 3D tools. The 230i, this, it, it's all the same. The 230i has the capabilities of running smart sync and in the fall we'll talk more about smart sync, but smart sync allows say um, it's a management software so you can go on our website and see more about it um, but it the table comes loaded with smart sync and then the teacher would choose it so here is smart sync if you want to find out more what it is a good thing that happens with the table is let's say you need to show some portfolio um, competencies and you you want to get something like an image of from from the table to say a screenshot well it's may be tricky to do all that from the table, but using Smart Sync, your the the table would show up on the teacher's computer, just like a student computer would do in a lab. Um, and you could take a thumbnail, a picture of a thumbnail, and show growth or portfolio assessments. That would be a way that you might want to check out Smart Sync. It does run through the network. The table does have wireless access, so you it does have an Ethernet port as well. But but um, either way, there's an Ethernet port under um, in the table on the 230i and under the bottom of the 442. So there is an Ethernet port, but you can run it wirelessly. It would be something that you would get your network administrators to set up for you. The table also is um, it does have 3D capabilities. So um, talked about it previously, and we'll talk about it in the fall. But it allows you to um, have inside of notebooks, say, potentially a 3D object that you can actually interact with. So those are some features that will work on both, both versions of the table. So that is about that, and I did talk about the version, the table software. So let's talk about um, the table software, and then I'm going to actually tell you something that's kind of new with the table. I hope I have a screenshot of this because I thought I did, but if I didn't, I'll tell about it. Um, so basically what will happen is on your 230i or on your on your 442, you would download this software from the from our website and you would extract it, place the file on your USB. When you plug it into the table, it actually will give you that little um, message, hey, and you don't have to go inside of the table. So sometimes people think, oh, there's a computer in there for the 230i. I have to go into actually plug it into the computer. It's all connected, so you just plug the USB into one of the USB drives, and it should acknowledge you and say, hey, there's a software update available. Do you want to install it? And you say, okay, that's going to remove all of the old stuff and add the new stuff. Now, with the new software 2.6, if you are on a wireless device, a good wireless system, there is a way for you to update it um, virtually. So we'll talk more about that. I, I went through and thought that I had a picture somewhere that I thought, but I don't seem to, I maybe I put it somewhere else that not in this file. So, but you can, you'll see it. You can go to, when you go, let's just go to this page right here. If you want to go, when you want to update, you can actually go to your about the table and you can click on the version. And when you do that, it will, it will bring up um, a new page and at the bottom it says check for updates and you can update it right there. Now, I would make sure that you're either hardwired or your wireless is really pretty good because that's a lot of information. Once again, coming through straight without saving it and stuff. But that is, that's an option. So a nice option. All right. So you guys are listening intently. 
<laughs> so, all right. So that's that's um, just just some. Um, I'll share this file so you can go and you can use revisit this. But I, I'm just going through it, so I'll, I'll share this file and I'll um, it'll go out in a follow up email. You can also. Some people have asked me, how do I tell which version of the toolkit that I'm running? Well, if I go to my toolkit icon down here in the About tab. Here's where I can see, and if I come up to technical support, look, I'm running version 2.5, and I could check for software updates here. So really, this little picture right here, this is what would show on the table, um, except that it would have a little uh, icon that says check for updates, and then it's kind of like the product updater in Notebook, if you're familiar with that. So that's you'll get that little icon on when you're on the table and you go to the About section. So I hope that didn't confuse. I thought I had a picture. I apologize for that. Um, what else? So that's that's new. Um, make sure that you're running 2.5. If you're not running version 2.5, it won't have Smart Notebook embedded within it. It won't be the current version. It will still be um, version 10.8. And as always, if you run into struggles, um, make sure your table is, is registered so you have that warranty. But also make sure you can contact tech support. And I'll talk about some resources. Um, so those resources, let's just talk about those. Um, the resources here, so I've got my digital dashboard, so I'll go to that, but then I also have our, our resources that are available. So let's take a peek at those um, because, you know, summer was sometimes the, when sometimes I get tired of going to the pool and just, you know, I wanted to do something with my brain. So sometimes I would go and, and look at things. So here's my, my Heather's digital dashboard. You don't have to put that whole long um, address. You can just put Heather's digital dashboard.com and it'll come up to this. You, if you, you are more than welcome to, um, look at this for anything. So here's advertising the virtual webinars, which I'll put the new date on there and things. I have a bunch of resources here, Smart Notebook 11. Here is my YouTube channel. So if I click on that, it does say Smart Table Friend, but I have um, I have videos for, for the Texas webinar as well as the table here. So you can see that here was our teacher to teacher um, that happened on Tuesday. So you could go back because we talked about extreme collaboration and widgets and it was fantastic. We have a teacher in Texas, Jeff Peterson, and they, he has astronomical resources. And you could go back and listen to Tara and I. But and then here was the Texas. And then here, anytime it says table virtual group, these are anything that's Texas. Here's table. So these are past sessions. And what I try to do starting off, I haven't done this all the way, but what I try to do is give you a little blurb about, whoops, um, about what we what we talked about in those sessions. So if you want to find out more about like um, using the document camera, there was a I think it was in a January or February session in last year that talked about that. So so that's one um, resource. So please please um, look at those and then like I said, go to the Texas ones and see. They'll be teacher to teacher starting from list this week, but they're still the same format. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is the resources. So we've got our smart learning space, which has some resources. So if you're looking for some professional development that you get credit for, that might be an option for you. It's the smart learning space, and you can go through course part. So there are some resources there. And if you if you look on if you watch the webinar, we talked about it yes uh, Tuesday, but you can go in. It's your same login for the Smart Exchange. But if I go to Training and Professional Development here under Resources, I'll show you a little tip. Um, if I want, I want to. I'm not just going to look at all of them. I'm going to go to Training by Product. So if I scroll over training by product. I'm going to find, and this still has a picture of the 230i, but like I said, it's uh, very, very much the same. So if I click on here, here are some resources. Now there's a ton of resources here. So um, I only want to look right now at the free things. So you can do this with any of our products. If you go up to the top under fine tune your results, and I click here, and I'm going to click, and it's already highlighted Smart Table. 
and I'm going to go to free resources and I'm going to change it to education and I'm going to refine my results. And now I have, here's some technical things that are how to, if you have a 230i, how to adjust your um, projector if you have the 230i, the uninterrupted power source. But then here's working with the table toolkit. Um, introduction to the smart table a little video and here's um, best practices for getting started with some um, getting started with the smart table so if you're looking for some resources there those are great places to start and then the other thing that I want to let me go back as I I forgot I was going to share this um, in in my YouTube channel if you scroll down to the bottom, there are these chapters seven, six, these these chapters here, um, and I there there's some there. Hmm, I thought there were more than that, but maybe oh here's a load more. So there's these chapters that actually about two years ago um, we had some interns that created them, and some of the the pieces are still applicable, but it was actually done in a previous version of the toolkit. So uh, there's a few things that are different. So this one of my challenges this summer is I'm going to update those and make some new videos. So stay tuned um, for using those. But you can see that they've been viewed a lot. So so be watching because I'm going to update those um, um, to to be more current. All right. Let's see. And I did put a link here to, to the when you get to the file. I also have some files that um, these are these are those same files. So one of the things that I remind people is creating for a, the creating table activities sometimes is different than creating, say, a PowerPoint or, or notebook files. And so one of the things that I have created is this activity planning sheet that it's when you plan to create activities, you may not even be ready to create, but at some point you might want to create your own activity packs. So these are some general recommendations, and they tell you about the apps. I, I need to update this because we've, we um, have like added smart notebooks, so I want to update those a little bit. But the best thing about it here is this little sheet. And if you think of an activity pack, an activity pack, if you start as a whole, there are applications that we'll look at, and then there's activities that are part of the application. So it's easier to gather. It's kind of like I tell people, it's like um, baking a cake. You wouldn't say, oh, you know what, I'm going to go bake a cake. But you forgot that you need the cake mix, and you forgot that you need butter, and maybe you need eggs. So you gather all your parts together, then you bake your cake. So I want to gather, if I'm going to do, say, an activity pack around um, a summer fun theme, I might want to have pictures of kids in pools or you know, activities. Maybe I'm teaching summer school, and I want to have an activity that revolves around um, planting something, you know, and, and it's it's an extension of what you're doing in the classroom. So you're gathering all the, if you have any videos, if you have any pictures, if you have any backgrounds, you're gathering all that together and it just makes your, makes your um, building process a little easier. Can you do it the other way? Absolutely. Just makes it a little, just a little recommendation. So I'll be sharing this, this file and with that activity plan sheet in it. So that's what those are. Those are in my attachments tab. Now I always get the question, you know, maybe I don't have notebooks. So what I have been doing, especially for um, smart table users, is I'll export this into a PowerPoint um, so that you can read it as well as I think last time I exported it even as a PDF. All right, so what else is new? Well, the new table 442i is 9% larger, which means it's using a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So if you have seen the new table, some of the activity packs are, um, they look like there it's a black bar on, and that's because they were developed with the 4 by 3. They still work beautifully, so there's no real problem with that. It's just you might see that and not know. We do, I'll talk, we have, um, uh, started updating our activity packs to be what we're calling HD quality, and HD is going to signify those those activity packs that have been um, updated to to show on the the new table. 
Now, if you have an old table, you wouldn't download the HD one. So that's that's new. There's a settings tab. So you just click on it, and then you get this little picture right here that you choose. How do you want your backgrounds to look? You can take, if you click on the 4x3, I did this the other day just to see what was going to happen, and it actually worked, but my mug was a little short and squatty. So some of your images may be a little stretched. So it's not going to interfere with anything, but it, that's what that's what happens. Right. So let's talk about those Smart Exchange and those table activity packs. So we're going to look at this, and then I'm going to go into developing or showing you how to do the third-party apps, because that's a question I get a lot. So let me go to the Smart Exchange. Now make sure that you are signed in. I'm already signed in. You see up here with my name, Heather L. I'm signed in. What's nice about, like I said a minute ago, if you create a login for the Smart Exchange, if you go to training right here, this will connect you to Course Park, to which is our Smart Learning Space, and this will this will connect you, and you can see that this is my Course Park. Um, it takes you right straight in, and there's some good stuff. If you have a smart um, if you're a smart board user, you might want to check out, um, it's Amanda's top 100 tips, and she's got some great videos on your smart board. So that's how easy it is to get to the course park and to the smart learning space. And there are some table things, some fee-based table things, and um, so you might, if you're looking for PDFs or things, you might stick with the, the training resources from our website. So basically, I've got in my file that there is, if I go to the Smart Exchange, I've got table applications and I've got table activity packs. So let's look first at where they're at and then let's talk about them. So when, you search, when you're searching on the Smart Exchange, you can search by subjects, you can search by grades, you can search by file type. So let's just search just general, broad. And, and show you kind of how it works if, um, if you're not familiar or sometimes people are not really familiar with finding activity packs. So let's say I'm going to, um, let's do summer. I'm going to type in here summer and I'm going to do a search. And what happens, we've got some premium things, what happens is I'm going to get, I did a broad search for summer, and when I do that, you'll notice that all of the different types of offerings that we have are here. Well, notebook lessons must live inside of the toolkit. So if I downloaded something, one of these 543 items, and just tried to open it, from the table, that's not going to work so well. So I, they have to live inside of the toolkit. So I'm going to scroll down to Smart Table Activity Packs right here, and I'm going to click, and I'm limiting my search now. So now I have 43 activity packs. So you can see there's a lot that has to do with summer. Summertime, oh, look, there's one of those HD. So I've got some, and some of them are created by um, teachers, some are created by smart, some are created by third-party developers. These are all free to download. There is some, you can customize them a little bit. You can't um, cross, like, commingle, like I can't have two activity packs up and, and cross over. So it's one activity pack that I can use, but I can delete um, things from them. If, say I wanted one and I'm like, oh, I only want those three applications, then I can use those three applications. So I, so that's that's how you find those um, activity packs. Now, could I download something as a smart notebook file and then use it within? Absolutely. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to come back up here actually and go back home. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to, this time I'm going to go to file type. And I'm going to show you, notice that I have smart table activity packs, so I can do a search that way. But I'm, I already showed you how to do that, so let's focus on the table applications. So table applications, let me open up my toolkit. So the, these are table applications. So there are some default table applications. So there's some things that are default. Now, I don't have defaults anymore, just defaults, because I've added the third-party apps. So see how I have A is for um, Apple, A is for challenge. There's a game. There's a challenge. 
bubble phonics, flashcards, grouping, those are all what's called third-party apps. So over here, if I click on this flashcard one, this is a third-party app that we'll talk about. So I've got some default applications and I've got some third-party applications in here. So I'm going to go back and click on table applications here. So you can see there are some premium that we do have. We've got a store. So some of these, like if you said, ooh, what's that Math Bingo? Well, I click on that, and it's a premium. So there's a cost to it. So there's it. And then somebody from Drag and Drop Consulting has created this bingo. If you want to say, well, how does that work? Well, here's your licensing, so you would use it, and here's your terms of license. So it's $4.95. There's a store that you can purchase those from. So there's a cart, and you can add to the cart and, and purchase those. But I'm not going to purchase anything. I want to use what's free and available right now. So here are some, and like say this place value train, that has me kind of intrigued. So there's four little pages that show me, so I can see page one of four, and it says it's a smart table application. You can see it's been downloaded 208 times, and three people thought, hmm, this is pretty good. So I can see there's four little pages. Not It's hard to tell, really, what, what it will do, but it looks pretty intriguing. I think it's a good idea. So basically, let me go back to my notebook file, and I'm, I'm going to show you. I put some steps, but I'm going to walk you through the steps so that you can kind of see. So, so let me show you what I've done. So third-party apps are extra. I have to download them, and I have to place them in two places. I have to download. You'll get a little icon like this, and I'm going to download, and I'm going to take that icon, and I'm going to save that icon to my bracelet or my USB drive, and I'm going to add it to the table, and I have to add it to my toolkit. So I've got some reminders. So basically, let's go to the next page. So I've got some reminders that say download. Um, some are customizable that we'll talk about. You have to add it to the table and add it to the toolkit. And you can add them straight to the toolkit. Some of them are not customizable. So you can add them to the tool to your table um, and just work with them like that. Some are you can add also to the toolkit and just not be able to customize them. But your their application. So basically, if you if you added something to your toolkit or you downloaded an activity pack and you have a message that says, "Oops, sorry, it doesn't look like you have this on your table," it means that somebody hasn't added that application to the table. So you've got to get those in both places. Um, I'll explain it a little more. So here's here's the steps right here. So I'm going to show you, but these are basically the steps. I'm going to I've got that smart exchange that uh, that train that place value train. So I'm going to bring to the front so you can see that's the page that I'm on. And it when I click on it, so let me send that to the back. So when I click on the little download button, so I'm click right here the download button. It's going to bring that file. What do you want to do? I want to save it. I don't just want to open it because I need to, it's going to open with the toolkit, but I really need it to save it because I need to put it in the toolkit, but I also need to put it on the table. So I'm going to save it, and once I save it, you're, it's, you'll have your download, and then you just take it, and you take that little icon, and when you take it, you're going to, well, you'll double click on the icon, and then did you notice how, so I'll have, and I put notes in here, so if I double click on the icon um, on one of them, let me do, let me see if I can get this here. Um, if I go to, I don't want to do, um, let's see. I don't think I have, well, I can go to my, let me go to my downloads and show you. I'm not going to download, but do you see all, these are my, the ones, I've already added those, so I don't want to add them again, but I would double click on that, or I would save that to a USB to put on the table and double click on it with the toolkit closed, and then it's going to add it. So I know that's kind of sounds tricky, but once you do it once, it's like pretty, it, it's just a routine. So I've got that downloaded. And so I have that downloaded on my computer, so I get that little icon, 
right here. And then I put the steps to add to the smart table. You put on your USB, and then I'm going to show you the, the the icon that looks like to add it to the table with the I mean to the toolkit. Close down your toolkit. Double click on that icon, and it's going to open up, and you will have those third party apps in your list. Hope that. Hopefully that's making sense. I don't have any questions. So um, if that doesn't make sense, I can walk you through it on a one-to-one -one basis. Or if you have questions, please let me know. It's seriously, it, once you do it once, it, it kind of makes sense. It, it's just the first time you, it doesn't make sense. So do it once and see what happens. And I'll, this file will have directions. When you, so when you put it on the, when, when you're on your toolkit, you just double click on the icon and it adds it. It's just magic. And it's all the programming and the developer stuff. On the table, so what happens on the table is this is an icon. So on the table, you'll see I have the USB. And what's on my USB? Um, oh, Jerry says, yep, thanks. It makes sense when you do it step by step. Thanks for that. Um, I've done it so many times, and once you do, so yeah, it does make sense. Um, when you so this is what it looks like on, so this picture came from the table so this is everything that is on my usb right here this is everything that would be on my table and then now we have actually access to the smart exchange that I'll talk about. So these are things that are on my USB. These are activity packs that I might use. That would be the activity pack that I want to have my students interact with. These would be the applications that I need to open. And when I open it, it's like it's syncing it to the table. And then it's like Let's say I have let's say I have this sample and somebody shared it with me and, and inside of that app, inside of that table activity pack I had beautiful bubbles but you know what my table doesn't have beautiful bubbles so it can't read it it's like if somebody somebody not too long ago sent me something in KidPix and she said can I do this in notebook? Well, I don't have kid pics on my computer, so it said, what do you want to do? And I had I couldn't read it. It's the same thing. You might open up activity packs that have these applications that you haven't added to your table. It'll still run, but it just won't run that application. So it this will allow it to read it. How many do you have to do this? You just have to do it once. So these you just add to the table once, but if I wanted to show this rhyming words or have my kids interact, I would open it. Um, once you add it to, once you open it once, it's going to go to in, to your, the middle right here. So it'll go into the middle and then you just have to click on the middle because it's already added to the table now. You, um, you still have to plug in your USB or there's a way to do it that I'll talk about another time. But you still plug in your USB and then you say, oh, I already downloaded it once or added it once. I'm just going to go to the table and the list should be there. Okay. So there is, um, so that's, that's basically those steps in, in getting things to your toolkit to your table. If you have questions, definitely ask me. I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about um, customizable versus not customizable and constructing a smart table activity pack. You know, the activity pack, um, to me, is it has its limitations, but you know what? It's, it's almost like a template. It doesn't have backgrounds and templates, but it's almost, it's very sequential. And once you kind of figure out how to do some of the backgrounds and things. It really is it really is not too hard to create. So maybe this summer it might be a good time to to explore if you haven't created your own activity packs. So just curious, um, how are anybody of you guys that are on, have any of you raised your hand if any of you have created your own activity packs? Anybody? Julie has great. I know Terry has. <laughs> I'm just raising your hand for you. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so Julie, um, you don't have to answer today, but I'd love to, um, 
if you would, on an, another session, say in the fall, I'd love to have volunteers that I have some teachers that I'm looking for to share any best practices and, and ideas. So think about it, and I would love for you to consider, um, you don't have to share the whole time, but maybe some tips and tricks or something that you've done um, with your, with in, when you're in your creation so other people can see and other people can hear people besides myself talking. So think about that. Terry, I'd love for you as well. We've had some, some reseller education consultants before, so I'd love for you because I know you have a wealth of knowledge. So those of you that haven't created anything, you know, I might encourage you to, after today, maybe try a little one and, and see what it's about um, and see, and you know, you can, you can create without having a table in at home. I, I mean, most people don't have the luxury of having a table at home, but you can create with on a computer. You can download the software. Um, oh, Julie says, okay, I'll polish one up. Yay, thanks. Um, no pressure. So so maybe in August or September, but I'll let, we'll talk offline. And anybody else, I would love for you to, um, to share because we just, I think um, it's people always say, gosh, I never thought of doing it that way. So perfect, perfect. So let's let's kind of talk about how do you construct one since the more majority of you haven't done one. So basically I put in my file, this is how this is when you open up, when you download the software, you're going to download and have like on my desktop, um, with all my I have uh, smart table toolkit right here. So you'll have that icon there. You would open that up. I'm not going to open it up because I already have this one opened, and I can only have one version open at a time right now, the way the software is. So um, I would open it. It would be like a blank slate. And so I have I had an idea saying today's theme was just kind of um, just a mishmash. So I don't really have quote unquote a theme, but I wanted to show you how I would start. So first of all, I have that theme and I chose over here. So I chose the applications that I would want to include. Some are better for different subjects so you could go through and, and select which ones. You can have up to eight. So as soon as I have eight applications, my other options turn gray. So I can't add any more in there. So maybe I don't want addition in there. I'm going to take that and it's going to ask me, oh, all of your work in addition will be removed. Well, I don't have anything in there. So I am okay. You also want to make sure that you save often because um, it's not so much the toolkit, but computers sometimes um, don't want to play nice and they freeze and and so you would do you can search and you can save your your activity pack whatever I called mine a sample but you might want to think of your naming conventions because when you open up your activity pack the the list on the table is going to be alphabetical so if you named everything like if I named everything lamb I'm going to have a list of lamb uh, and then whatever it is. Not so easy to find. So you might think of your naming conventions. Um, you might teach, if you're teaching by maybe themes, you may have all your summer theme or your wild animals or getting to know you all together. So you might say getting to know you activity one or activity pack one, getting to know you. Maybe you teach by week, so you may have all your week one. You can always go back and you can delete. So there, there is um, inside when you're on the table, right here, if I were to have clicked on the table, and I don't have a picture of this, if I click on the table, if I want to remove something, I would click on that icon right here. And it's going to ask you, instead of just saying open, it would actually say open or delete. So if you have something on the table that you don't want, so it would be under the table icon, you can delete it. That's like removing it from your table. So that helps you to manage. So I, I have these, so let's see what I have. I can quickly, if I wanted to see what's available online, I can click here, but I already know that I've already, I'm going to start fresh, so I'm not going to do that. But I've added a third-party app called Flashcards. I have one, Hotspots is a default application. 
Materials mix-up is not customizable. I'll talk about that. Media, narrow it down, puzzle, and word stew. Let me show you a trick also. So I've got the tabs up here. These are my applications. I can actually click on the circle right here and it'll take me to that application. A little trick. So Hotspots. Hotspots is a default application. As I told you before, it's not, I wouldn't say it's so template based, but it's pretty much step one, step two, step three. So what I those those chapters, it'll go through how to create in hotspots. And it's it's pretty similar. You'll get the gist of it. But if I said I'm gonna do this is gonna be my um let's see, this is my counting activity. So I would name it, and then it says step two, create a background. Well, I would have a background if I wanted to use a background, or I could create one. In our Make It Take It sessions, I talk about how to create backgrounds. You can create backgrounds in PowerPoint. You can create backgrounds in um, Notebook. You can create backgrounds in a variety of different ways. But think of the backgrounds, think of when you create things as layers. So the background is your bottom layer and things move around on it. So um, I, I'll talk more about that. So, so hots, you have, these are my labels. These are the things. So if I had a background, I would have the background here and I can have labels. Or I can have, um, let's see, I'm going to do frogs. Let's see. I'll choose. So that one's cute. And, I, and this is going straight to the Smart Exchange. And then I'm going to click OK. Now, um, the software has the ability, you can't resize, but you can image crop. So let's say I only wanted his head on there. Well, maybe I only wanted his, maybe I want his head. There you go. I can click OK. And there is it. Now, if you're a very A-type personality, this may cause you stress, but you have to remember when you create, um, you're creating for a 360-degree environment. So when that frog head turns around, it's going to be facing you. But remember, there's going to be kids at this side of the table. So that's why it turns around. I can, I've done many sessions where I can see teachers fighting, trying to get that frog to turn around and he won't because it, that's the way the toolkit is set up. So if I had something, I had a, um, a, an activity that I created, I, if I were to cre create something in notebook, what I would probably do, let me create, let me add a blank theme page. I might say, I might have like areas that I cre create and I say, you know, put this could be my theme, so this would be my background, like an ordering activity. And so I could easily create a background in Notebook. I can easily create a background in PowerPoint. If you go, if you go back through the webinars, there's um, sessions that I talked, make it and take it sessions that I did last summer, and you can find how to create backgrounds. Plus, check out those resources. It's it's pretty basic. You create a background, and then you can export it as an image file. So I could set up my background and I would export it. Now this is going to export every single page in my file. So I don't want to do that, but but it would. And then you choose whichever the size you want it to be. So I have 800 by 600, 1024 by 768 is large. I would probably, my backgrounds, I would probably choose the larger size um, for the new table. 800 by 600 is a good size for the um, for the 230i. And then ping, I haven't used to ping. I thought it was clear, but I'm not sold on that anymore. So either ping, P PNGs or JPEGs will work. And then you create your background, and, and that's basically, then, then you add your background. If I go back to the toolkit, I can add it by going to the folder. So let's say if I wanted this was background, my elephant, and click OK. Whoops, that's not where I want to do. I set up the activities. So see what happens? I do that all the time, too. So that's OK, because I can just click on that, and I can delete that. Here's where I want to put my background, where it says step two. I'm going to go back. Let me cancel that and get that folder. There's my elephant picture. Let me create it, add it here. 
And there's my background, how easy it is. So pretend that had, so maybe I, I had a picture of a ladybug and I wanted to match like labels to the ladybug's head and maybe it's abdomen, whatever. So then these would move around. And then you have your start position and you have your end position. And then you have a preview button. So I have, how do I want to preview it? That's the, so then you have your options. And then you, but if you preview it, it's going to show you what it's going to look like on the table. See those, the start and end positions are where those dots came about. So not really hard, not hard at all when you start playing with it. I know it sounds easier said than done, but you might want it to, you know, test yourself and see if you could create just a fun little one um, to see. So um, one, of the, one of the pages I had was, um, let me go back here, was talking about um, constructing customizable versus non-customizable. So I, I did this on purpose. So Hotspots is a default app. It's definitely customizable. Flashcards, it says it's customizable. So these are, this will launch, it says, into a separate program. Um, you just switch back into the toolkit. So it opens this up, and you can create flashcards that would go on to your computer. That would be an, an application. So you could make your, your flashcard manager. So you can delete and add pictures, you, what's on the card. So if you need text, do you want the quiz mode or non-quiz mode? You can record sounds. That's what the little button is. So pretty neat. When you're done with it, you can save it. So you would save the activity, and then you would just close it out, and I would go back to my toolkit. And then it would, it would show up on, when you get to the table. You won't be able to preview it in this mode, but when you get to the table, you can preview it. Materials Mix-Up is not customizable, but it's a neat application that's available from the Smart Exchange. So if I come here, let's see, it's a schools. Um, where did I find it? So I'm going to search. If I do materials mix up, there it is. So it, it's pretty neat. It gives a little description. So you can decide um, on how things, it says explore properties of different materials on the smart table. And then you can, so if I click on Materials Mix-Up, it gives me the broader direction. So that's there. So nice. So I added that just to kind of show you. Um, so that's a not customizable. So basically you would add it to your activity pack, but you don't customize it. It just does what it does. Media. Media is nice, especially in thinking the first of next year. Maybe you got you want a video like your for your kiddos, uh, places around your school, or people around your school, and then you want to have you know who is that kind of thing. So media is one of those things. Again, step one, you add videos and images. So I made a folder. So if I double click. Here's my image of those elephants, and I have a lion. Now this one I sort of thought of a theme. So here is this. I'm going to go back to um, show you that right now it is only showing pictures, but if I click on the this type over here, so I right now it's only showing AVI or um, I mean or the picture type, but if I click this down. In my folder, I have this wildlife WMB file, and there is, it won't show the video here, but it tells me which video it is. So you could get, maybe do some things this summer, and then you could put it on there. You can have 32 different imports, and it's really nice um, to be able to do that. It, the tables won't differentiate between sounds, so you might want to, you know, have some videos that don't have sounds, or just play one at a time, things like that. You also can tell and I'm cognizant of time, you can also tell um, how big do you want to zoom. So do you want your kids to be able to zoom so it covers up the whole table, 
or do you only want them to get to a certain point? Because if you have a kid that zooms it and makes it broad like on an iPad and resizes it or a tablet resizes it and covers up the whole screen, that kind of defeats the purpose. So you can choose how big do you want it to get go. And, um, you know, sometimes I might do two, three times. It just depends. And then the minimum scale. So how big do you want it? Um, you can also tell in full screen if you want to. I rarely do that. And then you can add directions. Narrow it down. There are some directions on this. Narrow it down is like a guess who game. So it's pretty fun. Kids ask yes and no questions. You actually can have add cards in here. You can come over here and you can grab images from the gallery or your own images and you can have and then they would just, um, and you can even add audio to this. So you can come here and there's, um, and then you, you create. And so if the kids have a certain number of cards. There are directions on the SMART uh, website on how to play this. Um, there's a trash can. You, you make um, yes, no guesses, and then, you, um, and then you get out, I mean, then you dump them out of the trash can, basically. Puzzle, not customizable, but it, everybody loved it. It's the word, it's the puzzle, the, the um, tangrams. And then words do. Words do just makes up words. Those are just some that I chose. I can change because there's some other ones that I added, so you might want to explore them. There's a lot on the Smart Exchange that you can see that are not premium or those fee-based fee ones. There is also I showed it and I have a couple of minutes. When you're on here, you can actually, let me erase this. If you have your table set up on the on um, the internet, you actually can go now and you can download straight to the table. Um, it does work really nicely if you if your internet is um, working you know pretty robustly, but it downloads. It also downloads based on um, you know you quickly add something if you want. Mm -hmm. You can't preview anything so you kind of want to know which ones you want. You can, like I clicked here, you can do a search. So you can search by country, by subject, by region, and these will go straight and be added to your table. So that second icon there. But you can't really change the name and some of the names are not as, they don't describe what they are. So you could try it. There is a keyboard if you select right in this box. It'll, you, if you select in the box, you'll get the keyboard up. So that's how you can add. And you can have smart notebook files. So you can add up to eight smart notebook files. So if you found something you wanted to add, they live inside of the toolkit. So it's another way. I already talked about the video helps. So be checking those out. Watch that because I'm going to work on some of those. And I haven't set a date up, but it'll be, the next session will be in August. I will start back up, probably back to the basics um, again, or continue this. And I'm guessing September is going to be the, the month that I do a make it and take it and, um, for um, you guys. And it is 5 o'clock. I, um, I didn't see if you guys have any questions. Any, anybody have any questions? I didn't see anybody raise their hand. Um, I hope that that helps. Let's see. Oh, Jerry says, yep. Um, that's the key to finding the time. Oh, yeah. Time is the key. So find something, maybe, Jerry, or in any of you, finding, find something and maybe tweak it and, and, you know, take something out and add something in. But, yeah, definitely it's the time. That's, that's why I haven't done the videos just yet because the time. Because um, I don't know if I said it last time, but I'm actually back in school. And so it's just going to be limited time again. So, um, but it's all good. I'm working on a PhD now in educational technology. So it's been really kind of exciting. Although this summer is not going to be so much because it's quantitative research. But that's okay because I'm having a good time with it. Um, so Jerry and the rest of you, definitely find the time. Um, email me if you have questions and if you if something you need clarification on. Email me and if it's something that I can um, let you know how to do through through email, I definitely will. But if we need to set a Bridget up or do a quick little run through of something, um, definitely let me know how I can help you. It's not it's not hard, but gosh, the I think the 
well, I have a passion about the table. I love the table. I love what it can do. It's just kind of sometimes getting over the hurdle. There's over 1,800 activity packs. So, Jerry, maybe find something and see how they've done it. Kind of get some ideas that way. But, yeah, summer project for sure. And if, if um, maybe you come up with something that you want to share. And, Julie, I'll tap into you. So if you'll email me, I would love it. Actually, I have your email from registration. But you guys will get a follow-up email, and I'll have all of these resources plus a recording, plus a link to the recording. I'll post this out on the Smart Exchange, I mean, on my YouTube channel. Um, if there's any questions, I wanted to, I try so hard um, to, to kind of get um, this more interactive, but I think you guys were just watching a lot. So if there's anything that I can help you with, um, please, please let me know. And it is past 5 o'clock. I'm not sure where everyone is, so I know it's later on um, the East Coast. Anybody have any last final questions? Either raising your hand or putting them in the box. All right. If you think of something or have some struggles with anything, let me know, Heather Lamb at smarttech.com, and watch for the date. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to be, but watch for the date. You'll get a little email like you have, and, and pass on the information to your colleagues as well. Have a great um, rest of the summer, or start of the summer, and um, if you're coming, we have ISTE in San Antonio this year in Texas. If you're coming to San Antonio, I'm going to be there, so I'd love to meet you. And if not, have a great summer. Spend some time for yourself, and um, I'll see you back in August.